When people see I live on life support, they often think I have a lot of challenges. They think living on life support is very complicated, but in the reality of things, living on life support is the easy part. It's getting medical care, which is the obstacle. When I first got my tracheostomy tube and ventilator, I faced so many challenges and obstacles. Doctors would refuse to see me. I one time even went into the doctor's office, waited over an hour to see the doctor, and as soon as he saw I had a tracheostomy tube and ventilator, he told me, I am not God. I can't help you. Get out of here. And he pushed me literally right out the front door. So that has been a continual problem for me is to get medical care. Thankfully, I do have a fantastic primary care provider, and actually it's an entire clinic. There are about 20 providers in the clinic, and the clinic has it that you can see any one of the providers, and it's not a big deal. They all know your medical history. They share the, the files with each other. They consult with each other, and it is a beautiful, wonderful system. Of late, I've been very, very sick with a pseudomonas infection. I've been taking IV antibiotics. But unfortunately, my sputum is a bright bluish green color, and this indicates it's pseudomonas. So something is not working with the antibiotics. Either the pseudomonas has become resistant to it, or I just need a higher dosage of the antibiotics. So I thought, well, I'll call up my primary care provider, come in, get a sputum culture, and then we'll find out what I need for antibiotics, and we'll go from there easy, shouldn't be any complication. So I do what I do every single day. I call him like, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, hello, yes, I would like to make an appointment. And the woman says, the clinic is permanently closed. I cannot tell you, I nearly dropped the phone. I was like, uh, 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 permanently closed. Uh, uh, th there aren't any doctors there that can see me. And the woman says, no, the last appointment was last week, Friday. There are no more appointments and the clinic is closed. I cannot tell you how devastated I was when I found that out. I asked if any of the doctors were practicing in the area and she said no. So I just about burst into tears because here I have this fantastic primary care clinic and they seem to be closed forever with giving me almost no knowledge of this. I, I just, I was completely flabbergasted by this. I had just talked to my doctor on Monday and he said nothing to me. Now I did find out that this was actually a planned closure. They planned this for about three years and slowly they've been tapering off doctors. I did not know this because I have not been hospitalized. Usually when I'm hospitalized, I see multiple doctors and you kind of find out things that are happening in the clinic. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I have been very, very healthy. I've been staying out of the hospital. We've been doing so much at home that I've not needed to go to the hospital. So the last time I was actually in the hospital that I saw my medical team was the spring of 2022. They didn't tell me at that time because why would someone tell you two and a half years before they're going to close that they're going to close in three years? <laughs> you know, like so, I was. I was just devastated. Uh, they, this clinic takes care of my IV nutrition called TPN. They are fabulous with taking care of all my medicines. And now I don't have a medical team. I just, I, I just started crying when I found this out. I went online, thankfully, and on their website, it did say that, yes, a lot of the providers are leaving. Uh, some of the, one of the providers in particular, I believe, is retiring but two of the providers are staying in the area. And I was so relieved to find that out. One is going to be doing a private practice clinic. That does not sound like it is set up yet. But another one is actually going to another clinic and she is starting to see patients in the next month. So I was very relieved with that. I called the provider and I was just the, the new clinic and I was like, please, please, I need an appointment. And I kind of had a lie and I feel bad for this because it said, when did you last see this provider? Well, the problem is my clinic, they see people and you never really see the same doctor and they always consult with each other. So to actually have an appointment with this particular provider, I, I don't remember, I don't recall. So I just said, well, she consulted 
this last spring on a case. And whether she did or not, I, I have no idea. But I have seen her many, many times in the hospital and in the clinic. So I'm really hoping when I see her in a month, that's when my follow-up is, that she will agree to be my doctor. I have no guarantee of this, but I'm just really hoping and praying she does. In the meantime, I have sput or my sputum is bluish green and I need to see a doctor. So I've uh, decided to try to see my pulmonologist and I hope and pray that goes well because he is extremely busy and it is always, always a challenge to see him because there are so many patients and he is just pulled in every direction that it is sometimes very complicated to get things, things done at his office. So I'm hoping and praying it goes really, really well and I can get my sputum culture and we can find out the results. Also today, so my primary care clinic is gone no more. Uh, today I also found out by a, a letter in the mail that my, prime, my medical provider that I see for my endometriosis, for my ovarian cysts, uh, they basically saved my life in 2022 when I had a massive ovarian cyst that was just compressing everything. The cyst was approximately this big, which is very, very large. And they were able to get rid of that and get rid of endometriosis and other things. And now I've been having a lot of issues again with my endometriosis. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to probably do a follow-up sometime, probably in the, in the fall of the year when I have a little bit more time. But today I get this letter and it says, Dear Valued Patient, we are writing you to inform you of the departure of blah, 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 blah. Uh, the doctor's last day to see patients was June 3rd. Uh, should you have an appointment scheduled with the doctor, scheduling staff will reach out to you to transition your case as seamlessly as possible to another provider. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact our office. And it says if you want medical records, please contact them, blah, 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 blah. So that is another provider I just lost today. And I'm just kind of like, I, I, I can't believe it. To huge medical providers in my life and now they are gone so I have nobody to see now for my endometriosis I have no idea there is a clinic approximately 10 hours away from me so maybe I'll follow up with them but again who wants to drive 20 hours to go to a doctor's appointment not me so I don't know what I'm doing with my endometriosis or I'm just gonna grin and bear it and hope and pray I don't have any complications and just take care of things as they come so that has been my life. It's just been absolute panic and chaos. I, I, I'm just beside myself that I lost my entire primary care team. I mean, this was like 20 doctors that I trusted and relied on, and they've just been fantastic. And I'm just really, really upset. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.